I'm Steve Phillips. This is my son Spencer Phillips and today we're starting working on a uh, artillery projectile from the war between the states. This is it. It's a 3.67 inch Yankee James shell. It's percussion fused. It was to go off on impact. This projectile was dug by and belongs to Don McAlpin and he brought it to me, wanted me to unload it, clean the powder out, and then preserve it for him so it'll be stabilized and won't deteriorate anymore. Iron is hard to stabilize and it's never forever. Iron's always uh, giving trouble. But we've already um, got everything, we set up everything out back so we can uh, unload this remotely we won't be there when it's actually drilling um, there's a slim chance that, that it could blow up so if it, we just have to assume everyone can blow up we're gonna be unloading the projectile in this uh, little shed that I have that's uh, I'll be actually remote I won't be drilling it while I'm there. Uh, the only time these projectiles are dangerous is when you're trying to unload them or if you're fully, foolish enough to uh, put them in a fire, like a fireplace or something like that. But I'll be way up here by my house and controlling it with uh, a rope and, and weights and pulleys uh, to let it drill. But People are always afraid of uh, a projectile just blowing up, but that's uh, that's really not the way it works. They they blow up when they're when they're drilled. They can blow up, and a few have over the years and kill people. So that's why I do it remote. Now what we're doing now is I've got it set up, and I'm going to drill through the base. Uh, so I won't, I could also drill through the side, but I'm going to drill through the base so it won't show up too much. I've got a, 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 a big enough drill bit. Uh, some people have drilled them with too small a drill bit and you can't clean the powder out. So I've got a, a, a fairly good size uh, drill bit. We're spraying a little bit of water on it, which doesn't keep it from blowing up. The only thing the water is for is just to wash the, the uh, drill in the way. And I'm going to turn it on, and I'll be heading for the house. Ben, will you get up there and hold on the rope? I've got uh, a big lead weight on this arm that's going to put pressure on it, but we're going to control it from the house. Right now, I'm going to turn it on, but it's not going to be drilling till we till I get out of here. <laughs> Okay, I readjusted it, and uh, now it's almost through. It's about, it's over a, a half inch uh, drill, but we got a little more. So he's holding the pressure off of it so it's not drilling. Now I'm going to turn it on and then get out of here. Then we'll lower it.
smell it, the gases that come out. People don't know whether that's what blows up or, or what. So you have to assume that every one is going to blow up. That's why you're just not here when it's uh, when it's drilling. But I can smell the uh, sulfur smell and the black powder smell now. And now I'm going to, uh, it went all the way through. So uh, we're through with drilling it. All right, did it make it through? Should have. Now, you need to lower it first over there in the back. Okay. Loosen that one a little bit. I think I already loosened it a little. And then just turn that one down. nail and we're going to just stick it in the hole okay. see if it comes out with black powder on it and yeah it black is all get out mm-hmm smell yep. it smells good oh god yeah it smells great like rotten eggs yeah just like rotten eggs all right we'll go to the next step now you can make these or I've made this Actually, I, I don't want other people doing this because other people have been killed and they take shortcuts. And uh, if you don't have a big farm or somewhere where you can do it remote, you're you're in da some danger, a little bit. I've unloaded over 2,000, and I've not had one blow up, but I'm expecting every one to blow up. Now the black powder has already been washed out because we washed it out a few minutes ago. But it comes out just black, but it, usually only some of it comes out, and you have to uh, soften it over a period of days and scrape it the inside. Um, we're going to be doing some other things going to loosen the powder on this one. But that's the way you do that, or the way I do it. Go Ready? for it. Yep. Okay. Now, we're going to do some reverse electrolysis, and I've taken an into the hole where I unloaded it. I put this big eyelet and some copper wire and just turned it in. I didn't drill a, another hole or anything just to get a good connection to the iron. And we're gonna do that in this stainless steel right here. And people don't understand how electrolysis works, but it's directional. In order for electrolysis to work, you have to go all the way around it. You don't just drop something in there. And it flows from negative to positive, current does, so it's going to flow from the James shell to here. It's going to deplate this, but we have to make sure it goes all the way around. And you use baking soda. You do not use ice cream salt, <clears throat> and you don't use lye. That's what people used a long time ago, but it caused more problems. So you want to use something that's benign, like this. Baking soda, it, it doesn't conduct as well as salt, but it will work and it, it won't cause trouble. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do reverse electrolysis. I use a regular uh, battery charger. If you want to get one, the old kind that's got a built-in meter so you can see that it's working. And behind it, I've got a voltage regulator that I can actually control the voltage that goes with it. But you don't have to have that. You can control your voltage by just your baking soda. All right, now I'm putting the, this is the positive lead. This is the negative lead. The negative lead's going on here. It's connected to the jam shell and the meter. Watch. See, the meter came up about one amp. That's a pretty good a um, uh, way for it to run for about a, a day or two and and then the uh, the rust and all should start sloughing off and so I'll look at this tomorrow 
And this just has baking soda, water, the dirt and stuff like that really doesn't matter. Uh, some people say you have to use distilled water and all that. Forget all that. That's just uh, hooey. But if you look real close on the projectile now, you see these bubbles coming up right around the edge. It's going to make a, a foam ring around it. The bubbles are coming up now. That means we've got a good connection. Now, we're doing sort of a mechanical cleaning. That does not get rid of the sulfides. The sulfides can be gotten rid of with electrolysis, but that would be a long period, a very low current, a few milliamps, and uh, it would may, may take a year or, or six months uh, to get rid of sulfides. They're a lot harder to get rid of. What we're doing is actually deplating the rust. in here, the way I've got this piece of stainless tubing, that is not touching this stainless here. It's only touching the plastic. If this was touching that metal, it would be a direct short and nothing would work. This is uh, not touching at all here. Just It's just laying on the plastic. And the, the bubbles are coming up good. So we'll look at this again tomorrow and be ready to move on from there.